So let's start with just defining what is candida and why it can be a problem. It's a yeast or a fungus normal to the human microbiome. So that's important to clarify because detecting any candida is not necessarily a problem. In fact, candida is commonly found on your skin, in your mouth, in the vagina. I should also mention that I want to cover in detail with you today candida in the gastrointestinal tract, in the gut. There's another type of candida, which is invasive candidiasis, a blood infection of candida, which is serious and can occur in critically ill and or immunocompromised patients. That's not what we'll be discussing, but the terminology does overlap candidiasis or invasive candidiasis versus candida in the gut. So I just want to make that one distinction. Now in the gut, you can have overgrowths in the mouth being the first section of the gut, not really our focus here today. It's more so the small intestine known as CFO or small intestinal fungal overgrowth or in the colon. Whether it grows, overgrows in the colon, the large intestine or the small intestine, there are data correlating fungal overgrowth with IBS. So gas, bloating, abdominal pain, discomfort, diarrhea, constipation, and even some data correlating with anxiety. And certainly as we appreciate the impact of impaired gut health can have on the immune system and therefore inflammation, it's also possible that a broader swath of symptoms might be caused by candida overgrowth in the gut. There are about 200, a little over 200 species of fungus, so candida being one type of fungus, in the GI tract. Comparing that to bacteria, there's about a thousand, a little over a thousand bacteria in the GI tract. Just to give you an idea of there's certainly a lot more bacteria than there are fungus. And again, just want to say this one more time because I do see this being a point of confusion. Someone had a stool test, they found candida, and there was sort of a, a little bit of alarmism perhaps. Remember that candida albicans is the most common species and it is found in the gut of most healthy volunteers. Now there is a way to distinguish, is this a normal amount or abnormal? And we'll come to that in a moment. If this has been helpful, please subscribe, comment, and if you wouldn't mind, share this with one person you think it would help. Okay, so quickly, what are the causes of candida overgrowth? Certainly we want to be paying attention to what causes this situation so we can be proactive and preventative. And I would say here, there, there's nothing new, but certainly things that we want to pay attention to. And we have made a few additions to this schematic from the journal Microorganisms. Acid lowering medication can be a predisposing factor for candida. Why? Well, you need to have acidic stomach contents to kill off bacteria and fungus and prevent them from seeding and overgrowing down the rest of the intestinal tract chronic stress. Remember that these bacteria and fungus, including candida, live inside of us normally as part of a symbiotic relationship. But something has to sort of police and make sure that there's not an overgrowth of these organisms who are hanging out, metabolizing foodstuffs, and doing other things that are good for us. But again, without some sort of governing force, they can overgrow. That governing force in part your immune system, and we know that stress will suppress your immune system. Unsurprisingly, antibiotics, and this is because antibiotics kill bacteria, bacteria help police out and sort of keep in check, counterbalance levels of fungus. And this is why sometimes you will see someone take an antibiotic and then have a rebound fungal overgrowth. A sedentary lifestyle. We know that when people who are sedentary start exercising, they demonstrate richness or an increased abundance of healthy bacteria in their gut. So if you're sedentary, you're not allowing the world of bacteria to have an input exercise that it needs to be rich. And remember, the bacterial colony helps put a balancing pressure onto the fungus that naturally occur in your digestive tract. Alcohol and processed foods, again, probably not surprising, and additionally smoking. These factors, somewhat obviously, but just to make sure I state this, aren't unique to only causing fungal overgrowth. They can cause, as the schematic here is depicting, dysbiosis, meaning overgrowths or even SIBO, 
bacterial overgrowth. So it can be imbalances in overgrowth, or I should say technically dysbiosis isn't an overgrowth per se. It's an imbalancing in the relationship amongst different bacterial and fungal populations. These unhealthy behaviors skew the ecosystem in the gut of the flora, of the life, the bacteria, the fungus. This can co-occur along with increased inflammation as you're seeing the cytokines. And then LPS is one marker of leaky gut. The takeaway here is that these imbalances in the gut tend to happen together. And it's rare that you see just one thing go out of whack. Now, depending on how you interpret that, that could be good news or bad news. I look at it very encouragingly, meaning that if you do have these imbalances, the right therapeutic supports will start to correct multiple imbalances simultaneously. So just keep that in mind. If we intervene correctly upstream, we'll have multiple downstream beneficial effects.